I'd say that there are three main categories of finishes. First, the machine family, where tool marks are still present, but the roughness varies depending on the use case, as machined or smooth machining. Second, there is the primary finishes family, where the surface is altered mechanically to change or remove the machining marks, bead blasting or brushing. Third, the secondary finishes family, where the surface is altered chemically or coated to add resistance or change the appearance further, anodizing or powder coating. So let's have a look first at an as machined finish. As machined parts have marks that follow the path of the cutting tool, and you can see that clearly on this part. Quality of the surface is measured by what is called the RA, or average surface roughness. RA is a measure of the average difference between the machine profile and the ideal surface. So the average difference between the actual machining and the ideal machining. The standard surface roughness, or RA, is 3.2 micrometers, or 125 micro inches. You can, however, try to reduce the roughness down to 1.6, 0.8, or 0.4 micrometers with extra finishing passes. Just remember that this will add to the cost of your production. The pros of an as machined finished, consistency over several units, tightest dimensional tolerances, and no additional costs. The cons, visible tool marks on the part. As a rule of thumb, use the as machined finished for parts with tight tolerances where aesthetics are not an issue. Next, smooth machining. Smooth machining is actually like an as machined finish, but with slightly less evident machine marks. Parts are machined with a finer step to an RA of 1.6 micrometers or 63 micro inches. Even though smooth machining is smoother than as machined, it is still not what we call a cosmetic finish. In these photos, you can see the difference between an as machined part and a smooth machined part. The pros of smooth machining are a high consistency over several units and stable tolerances, especially for mechanic parts. The cons, you can still see machining marks and it's a bit more expensive, especially for complex parts. As a rule of thumb, smooth machining is best for precise parts where the surface roughness needs to be fine, but is not suitable for customer-facing products. Next up, bead blasting. In bead blasting, a part is blasted with small glass beads using a pressurized air gun. The result is that some material is removed and the surface is smoothed out. As you can see, bead blasting adds a uniform matte and textured surface finish on the machine part removing the tool marks. Bead blasting will not have an effect on tolerances except for holes or tolerances of plus or minus 0.02 millimeters or tighter. If you're worried about dimensional changes, critical features like holes can be masked. Bead blasting is used mainly for visual purposes but is a manual process, meaning results may differ, however small, depending on the skills of the operator. In bead blasting, the different size beads and air pressure guns are the main process parameters. The pros of bead blasting are a uniform and textured finish and it is a relatively low cost surface finish. The cons are that it's a manual process and it can influence dimensional tolerances and surface roughness. As a rule of thumb, use bead blasting for parts with a matte uniform finish when dimensional tolerances are not a key concern. Next finish, brushing. Brushing is produced by polishing the metal with grit, resulting in a unidirectional satin finish. You'll find that brushing is mostly used for aesthetic purposes as it covers up imperfections from the machining. Standard roughness for brushing is 1.2 micrometers or 47 micro inches. Brushing is not advised for applications where corrosion resistance is required. Here, you can see the difference between an as machined part, a smooth machined part, and a brushed part. The main pro of this finish is that machine marks are removed. The main con is that it's a manual process. As a rule of thumb, brushing is great for parts with long flat surfaces as it's easy to access with sandpaper. Think of fridges. Let's move on to the secondary surface finishes and talk about anodizing type two and three. Generally, anodizing adds a thin ceramic layer on the surface of metal parts, aluminum or titanium. This process is mainly used for protection against corrosion and wear. In type two and type three anodizing, the part is submerged in a diluted sulfuric acid solution and an electric voltage is applied between the components and the cathodes. An electrochemical reaction consumes the material on all exposed surfaces of the part and converts it to hard aluminum or titanium oxide. To protect surfaces with critical dimensions, 
a mask can be applied to prevent them from anodizing. Anodizing is not simply done to protect parts, it is also often used for aesthetic reasons. Anodized parts can be dyed in various colors before sealing, such as red, blue, black or gold, which gives them that aesthetically pleasing surface finish. Anodizing type 2 Anodizing type 2 is also called standard or decorative anodizing and can produce coatings with thickness up to 25 micrometers. The typical coating thickness depends on the color. It can vary between 8 to 12 micrometers for parts dyed black and 4 to 8 micrometers for clear undyed parts. Type 2 anodizing is mainly used to produce parts with a smooth, aesthetically pleasing surface. It provides good corrosion resistance and limited wear resistance. As a rule of thumb, use anodizing type 2 to add a thin, aesthetically pleasing, protective layer to your aluminium and titanium parts. Anodizing type 3. Anodizing type 3 is also called hard coat anodizing and can produce coatings up to 125 micrometer thick. Type 3 anodizing produces thick ceramic coating with high density that provide excellent corrosion and wear resistance, suitable for functional applications. If not specified otherwise, the typical type 3 anodic coating is 50 micrometer thick. As a rule of thumb, use anodizing type 3 in engineering applications where very high wear resistance and surface hardness are required. The cost of anodizing type 3 is higher than of anodizing type 2 because it requires closer process control. The pros of anodizing are it provides a high wear resistance coating for top end engineering applications, especially anodizing type 3. It can be applied easily to internal cavities and small parts. The cons it is only compatible with aluminum and titanium alloy and can be relatively brittle, especially compared to powder coating. Type 3 anodizing is the most expensive out of all the finishes covered in this video. Lastly, powder coating. Powder coating adds a thin layer of protective polymer on the surface of the part. The powder coating process is similar to spray painting, but the paint is a dry powder instead of a liquid. Finally, they are cured at a high temperature, usually in an oven at 200 degrees Celsius. Powder coating is a strong wear resistance finish compatible with all metal materials. It can also be combined with bead blasting to create parts with a smooth, uniform surface with excellent corrosion resistance. Multiple layers can be applied to create a thicker coating and the typical thickness varies from approximately 18 micrometers up to 72 micrometers. A wide range of colors is available. The pros of powder coating. It is strong and provides wear and corrosion resistance for functional applications. Provide a higher impact resistance than anodizing. It is compatible with all metal materials and multiple colors are available. Cons, it offers less dimensional controls compared to anodizing and is not suitable for small components. It cannot be easily applied to internal surfaces. As a rule of thumb, use powder coating for applications where high impact strength is required or to finish parts that cannot be anodized. With that, we've come to the end of this video. Today, we discussed the most common surface finishes for CNC, but there are some less common ones that we did not mention, such as electro-polishing, black oxide, and electroless nickel plating. If you're interested in a video about these finishes, please let us know in the comments.